All right, we are joined by Scott Kennedy to help us break down Monday night's matchup between the Falcons and the Philadelphia Eagles. You can follow Scott Kennedy on YouTube, youtube.com slash Scott Kennedy. He does amazing work with Sports Illustrated uh, covering the Atlanta Falcons. Scott, what's up, man? Just another day in paradise. Uh, it took all of one week to let the uh, to let the air out of the Falcons balloon is all it took. So everybody's kind of like not sure what to expect for this Philadelphia Eagles matchup coming up on Monday night. Yeah, there's a lot to get into. We're covering top matchups to watch. We're covering X factors, score predictions, and more. Let's jump right into this thing. Week two, dude. What is the current state of the Atlanta Falcons heading into this week? The current state for the Atlanta Falcons seems to be the typical state for the Atlanta Falcons, which is what the hell's going on? What the hell's going on out here? Um, that's, you know, kind of the franchise default mode. Um, you know, it, they spent a ton of money on Kirk Cousins. They put him in bubble wrap over the course of the preseason. Is he hurt? Is he not hurt? And then they don't play him at all in the preseason. They don't play anybody in the preseason. Then they go out against the Pittsburgh Steelers and they look like they're treating it like a preseason game. Like they're, we're going to just try and keep everybody healthy out here and see how if we can get through it. They ran an offense that Kirk Cousins has never run before in a formation he's never run before. And this is a 12-year veteran coming off an injury. So we don't know. No idea. Are you planning on keeping Kirk Cousins in a shotgun running the pistol, something he's never done before in his life? Are you going to leave him standing back there like a statue the whole time? Are you not going to run any play action? Yeah. We don't know. We don't know. Yeah, it, that's shocking to me because I thought the offense would be very interesting this season, and they definitely came out sluggish. Not unlike the Eagles, who first two series, it, it looked bad. They're sloppy, but... All things considered, they put still put up 34 points. Jalen Hurts struggled at times, but um, I want to talk about matchups, dude. What is the biggest matchup to you between the Falcons offense and the Eagles defense? Well, it may end up being the most fun matchup. Might be right up the middle. Um, yeah. You know, the tackles for the Falcons are enigmatic. Uh, Caleb McGarry got left on an island against TJ Watt. Oops. Yeah, can't do that. Uh, I don't know. We're going to help him with Kyle Pitts, who doesn't block every once in a while. But I think what what's interesting, what's going to be interesting to me is the the middle of the defense, where it's just there's so many fun players to watch on the Philadelphia Eagles defense. But you bring up a couple of Georgia boys up there, and Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter, who a lot of Falcons fans watch because they kind of wanted to draft Jalen Carter in that eight spot. And the Eagles are going, wait, he's falling to us? Really? <laughs> Thanks, Falcons. <laughs> Thank you. Um. You know, Bajon Robinson's still going to be a big part of this offense, and he's going to get the most touches in every game as long as he's healthy. He runs really well off tackle, though, but can they get any kind of push up the middle? Um, so for me, Chris Lindstrom is probably the best player on the Atlanta Falcons, and he's probably the best player in the NFL you've never heard of. The guard, uh, right guard, all pro guy. Uh, Drew Dahlman, pretty good in the run game center. And then Matthew Bergeron struggled a little bit in his second year in the middle. So for me, the middle is always going to be interesting. And then can you survive the edges? Because Philadelphia always seems to run four edges at you. And after that, it's really all about what the hell are you doing, Atlanta Falcons, on offense? Because how do you run zero play actions with Kirk Cousins? I don't care if you're in a shotgun. You can still run play action out of the shotgun. So the matchups are the matchups, but right now... The Falcons are looking internally. We're looking at the Falcons. Like, what are you doing? And it doesn't necessarily matter who you're playing. Because if they play like they did against the Steelers, it won't matter who they're playing. Yeah, I, I like the matchup between the Falcons offensive line and the Eagles pass rush. Obviously, you mentioned TJ Watt, uh, who was eating last week. But, you know, the Eagles pass rush isn't like years past. You know, Bryce Huff was basically non-existent week one. Um, they've got some other guys. Um, like Josh Sweat didn't really do a lot. And um, Brandon Graham, this is his last year. So uh, I want to see a more improved pass rush in week two. Um, they only got two sacks. Both of them came from Zach Bond, who looks like the breakout star of the NFL. <laughs> At least overreaction Monday after week one. Let's throw it to the other side. Biggest matchup to watch, Falcons defense versus the Eagles offense. 
containing Jalen Hurts in the run game, probably. Um, you know, I, you like you like the Falcons have really improved on the defensive side of the ball with a couple of their additions. Jesse Bates is really good. Justin Simmons is really good. Somehow, though, the Eagles have one. I mean, the, the Steelers have one skill player, and they were able to isolate him in George Pickens. Yeah. How does that happen? You know, I want two guys on. Now, the Eagles can scare the crap out of you with multiple weapons. And if I can get, if Arthur Smith can get George Pickens open, what the hell are you going to do with A.J. Brown? Mm -hmm. You know, so um, and with Jalen Hurts throwing the ball, I mean, that, that becomes a little bit more scary. Running quarterbacks have always just killed the Falcons. Uh, that that's that goes way back. Not that everybody else hasn't. I mean, I think they've got the fifth worst winning percentage all time in the NFL. But again, the secondary will be interesting to me. And, and it's always interesting. You know, can the Falcons generate a pass rush on their own? Uh -huh. Because they haven't been able to do it with four guys for several years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you look at the Eagles offense that they, they ran a lot of motion in week one and Jalen Hurts struggled with decision making uh, at times. The one throw he threw across his body uh, into no man's land had no zip on the ball. It was a horrible, horrible decision it led to the interception um, where they could have really iced the game. But there's light at the end of the tunnel for Eagles. I thought Jalen Hurts looked terrific in motion. I thought you look at the offense with A.J. Brown and Devontae. They, those, those are obviously, we know, two studs that... Um, uh, that are going to be a major problem for the Falcons defense. So let's run into our next question. And that is the biggest X factor on the Falcons that maybe Philadelphia fans don't really know enough about that could make an impact in week two. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. I don't have an answer for you. I mean, the the guys that will get the ball are pretty hope high profile guys. I'm like, if you play fantasy football, you've heard Drake London, Kyle Pitts, the John Robinson, Kirk Cousins, for the wrong reasons. You know, how are these guys not getting used? We've heard that for, you know, multiple years now. Tyler, Tyler Algier, the running back, he had 1,000 yards the year before, set a Falcons rookie rushing record. The year before the, the, the Falcons drafted the John Robinson is probably the best player, best skill player that you, you haven't heard of. Um, Grady Jarrett is criminally underrated around the NFL because he's been on bad teams. Yeah. But... I mean, a huge impact in week two. I don't know. I mean, it's just right now, you, I, I, there's no there's no good answer because of how bad the offense was in the first. They had 50 yards. They had 50 yards in the second half against the Steelers. Yeah. Is, uh, is, I think the better question isn't necessarily the X factor. The biggest question is, is anybody going to have an impact for the Atlanta Falcons against the Philadelphia Eagles because nobody did in week one. Wow. Uh, I'm a big NFL draft guy. I cover, uh, I do multiple shows on college football every week. So I got to ask you, uh, first impressions with Michael Penix Jr., Ruka Rohro, uh, Braylon Trice, who I was a big fan of out of Washington. Uh, are those guys going to be on the field at all? I, I, Trice is out for the year. He blew a knee. Is he? Yeah, he blew a knee. Michael Penix will not see the field unless there's an injury to Kirk Cousins. Uh, Ruka Rohuro will see some time in a backup role, but the Falcons went through this draft. Tell me if there's anybody else you can say this about without drafting a star, a player that's projected to start. Jeez. And that's going in, you know, going into this season. Now, injuries happen. If something happens to David Onyemata or Grady Jarrett, then maybe Orohuro comes up next, but they didn't draft a single guy that was a projected starter, including number eight overall pick, Michael Penix, who they wanted to put on the shelf for their $100 million guaranteed 36-year-old quarterback. Yeah, you look at the schedule for the Falcons. They have the Eagles at home Monday night. Then they have the Chiefs, and the Saints look pretty strong uh, in week one. Is there, just circling back to Michael Penix, is there any chatter uh, that Michael Penix could get on the football field this season? Like, is that only... Kind of Only if it goes completely down the toilet, you know, it, it's like break glass in case of emergency. That That's it. Okay. Cousins is hurt. The Falcons are 0-10. Now, the Falcons' schedule is front-loaded. It's, yeah. you know, I, I've said that based on all the newness with this team, including uh, Kirk Cousins, this team could legitimately start. Now, I backed off on this once I saw 
some of the defensive additions like Matt Judon and Justin Simmons. And I went from, okay, two and three is a hopeful start to three and two, but I had them, I switched up my, my thoughts on the Steelers because I'm like, okay, they can beat the Steelers. Well, they could beat the Steelers. The Steelers offense is dreadful. You know, they were, they lost by one score, giving the ball away three times and only having 50 points, 50 yards of offense. The Falcons beat the Falcons and this, and Mike Tomlin's smart enough to let them beat the Falcons. So no, you don't plan on seeing Michael Penix this year unless something happens to Kirk Cousins or if something is happening to Kirk Cousins and he's not fully healthy yet. But finish your point. My point is they could start one and four and still go 10 and seven. Gotcha. Their, their, their schedule is poor and it's it's backloaded. The, the, like the, they play like four playoff teams all year for the first five games are against those teams. Sounds good. And then we get to our last segment. Winner and score prediction, man. How do you see this Eagles versus Falcons matchup playing out on Monday night? Oh, goodness. Uh, the Falcons have a long and glorious history of embarrassing themselves on national television when they're playing an isolation game. They looked god-awful uh, against the Steelers. We don't know what's going on with the offense. And, and Philly will put up points. They, their, their offense is significantly better than the Pittsburgh Steelers was. I could see you somewhere in the long lines of 31 to 13 Eagles uh, on this one. But again, it's week two. It's overreaction week. Uh, you know, this is the week of overreactions. But I, I think the Eagles win this one pretty comfortably. And I think 31 to 13 is probably pretty safe on that one. To be honest, that makes me nervous, Scott. I'm not going to lie. Like, this is <laughs> as an Eagles fan, every time we, we have this kind of thought process where it could be a double digit uh victory for the birds things don't necessarily turn out like that so. i just don't know if the falcons are ready to, to win they're not playing they're playing like they're trying to just survive the early part of the schedule so they can get serious like like they took my prediction to heart i'm like oh we're gonna lose these games anyway let's make sure we get through this healthy and then we can really start playing week six and win 10 of 11 games and make the playoffs and get hot it's just they did not play this game. I said they they didn't play a single player in their like first 30 for uh, more than three snaps in, in the preseason. Total disdain for the preseason. Week one looked like a preseason game. It yeah. looked like, okay, this is, we're just going to try and get everybody, we're going to try a couple new things, try and get everybody healthy and get out of here. That's what it looked like. So it's like, okay, why are you playing so scared? If you're scared to play Kirk Cousins, then don't play him. Mm -hmm. If you're afraid of him getting hurt, then don't play him. If you're not, then take the bubble wrap off and let's go to work. You don't get Kirk Cousins to have him not do play action with right. Bajon Robinson behind him. Amen. Help me out here. Explain this to me like I'm a again, here's good good movie that everybody in Philadelphia ought to know. Explain this to me like I'm a six year old. <laughs> All right, that is at Scout Kennedy on X. <laughs> go check out his YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Scott Kennedy. Uh, dude, uh, final thoughts on the matchup. Anything else you want to plug? Time's yours, man. Let's see. I looked up the uh, the the official. The over under on this is forty eight and a half. I said thirty one to thirteen, so that's forty four. So I took the under on this one a little bit, and then the the Philly is a just under a touchdown favorite. Eagles, man. I I, I feel pretty comfortable. I never bet though when I'm involved with a team because your emotions skew the logic on it, mm -hmm. but. There's a lot of logical reasons why the, the, the Eagles beat the Falcons by two scores.